Drinking Huel changed my life, but not in the way that you think. I started drinking Huel back in 2017, and it taught me some valuable lessons about nutrition and diet and general healthy living that I still use to this day. So let's get into it. When I started drinking Huel, my diet was awful. I ate takeaway every day. I was actually pretty skinny, so I wasn't fat, which is kind of weird for the amount of takeaway I used to eat. I would go out skateboarding a lot, so I did a lot of physical activity. I also ate a lot of meal deals from the supermarket, so that would be like sandwiches that's got lots of mayonnaise in, the pre-packaged like cheese and chicken. I remember I used to drink Mountain Dew back then for skateboarding. And when I would go out skateboarding, I would get sort of like dizzy. I'd start skating and then I'd have this feeling like that I was sweating and I went lightheaded and I'd think I've got to rush into the shop and get something to eat and that's sort of how my life was at the time I didn't think much of what I was eating I didn't think about it at all really Not, I didn't think about nutrition whatsoever and I ate a lot of carbs like a lot of toast yeah lots of bread in general and that was sort of like I'd say 90% of my diet was carbs or takeaway or meal deals that's pretty much all I ate. And then one day I saw this advert, I think it was actually on Instagram, and it was for Huel. And I sort of had this idea that just like having a shake, which was, I thought it was a good idea. So I guess the advert worked on me and I bought it and I started drinking it. I started drinking it a lot. I still remember the first time I drank it, <laughs> I, I was just getting a lift to work and I just made one up so I could have something to eat at work and I had my first sip and I thought this is bloody disgusting and I almost threw up it like made me gag and for some reason I carried on drinking it most people would have given up straight away after that but I kept drinking it as the days went past like I made myself drink it the taste slowly like it tasted fine after a while and I actually grew to really like the taste which shows you like if you just make yourself eat anything after a while you'll start liking it so you can use that for like vegetables and that that's one little thing it taught me but also what it taught me was that I was not feeding myself properly because drinking this powder I started feeling better I started having more energy I think the dizziness just went away as well like I was giving my body the nutrition it needed from there on I just kept drinking it for a while and over time I learned about what was in it and why I was feeling better on the back of Huel it shows you like all of its nutrition and it's just a case of like I started learning about it really the most important thing was I wasn't eating all this crap suddenly and suddenly my body was feeling better a lot of what's in it was there are carbs in it but it's got high amounts of protein healthy fats as well the main thing it showed me was it gave me a sort of yes it is a meal replacement but I saw it as like a cheat code and it laid the foundations for making long-term improvement in that way and that's what I really value about Huel and to this day I don't drink it that much like I might buy a ready-to-drink Huel from the shop just to have at work because it is still very convenient. I still use what I learned back when I started now and I, I eat a lot better. So that framework that it showed me, it, like I said, it was replacing those bad meals that I was having. I would then think about what can I eat instead? I learned about nice balanced meals, like more like lean proteins, nice healthy fats like avocado, real butter, all those sort of things, peanut butter especially. And I started applying those to the meals that I had. So for breakfast, I thought oats, that's an okay carb to have. A lot of Huel is oats. And then I thought, you know, berries, that's a good way to start, you know, get some vitamins in there, get the healthy fats in and the protein with the peanut butter, and then slowly replacing the Huel meals with real meals. Yes, I sort of leaned on Huel for a long time, using it to replace most of my meals. I sort of became a bit, I won't say fanatical about it, but I was like, you know, a positive customer about it. And I would share it with as many people as I could. And if you look at my channel, I made a few videos on it quite a few years ago. And I'd share it with all my friends and my friends started getting on Huel just because it improved my life so much. But the reason it improved my life so much was because my diet was so bad. So I see it as like, you know how people say, 
smoking weed is like the entryway into other drugs, even though that's not true. I see Huel as like the gateway, the gateway food into better diet. It really shows you how you could feel if you ate right. It shows you like you literally have a list of vitamins on the back. So you can just look at those vitamins and think, which ones do I need? And the way that the food is designed, like the, the split of macros, so that'd be your, your fats, your carbs and your protein. You, it's like a guideline for you for, for meals, really. When you're ready to take the next step, it's take the huel away and replace it with real food. And I don't see many people talking about this aspect of it because it, it is like a meal replacement drink, but it's the fact that it's like a, a stopgap between bad diet, huel, then real food. But yes, it is useful. You can supplement meals with it here and there. But I see its main use as a stopgap between, you know, your bad diet, low amounts of nutrition IQ, let's call it, like knowledge around nutrition. And then now you're having the heel and then slowly you research and learn about nutrition. I know it can be quite nebulous to research these things, but I think a lot of things, it can be simple, really, if you think about it. It's just eating whole foods, eating vegetables eat more for, eat more bloody vegetables eat more fruits get your vitamins in eat things that you you know are healthy like i feel like everyone does know what foods are healthy they just don't want to eat them like <laughs> they might be eating like i said i was eating loads of takeaway and that it just probably isn't in the forefront of their minds it's not important because at the time i, I was like early 20s i think when i started drinking heel it was like diet wasn't a thing on my radar all i cared about was like hanging out with my friends or getting drunk or high or eating takeaway or you know i cared about having a good time whereas like as you get older you need to think more about your diet and that because you start to feel the bad decisions that you made, like the impact it has on your body. So that's where I think the heel, um, I sort of got it at the right time. Although I wish I learned about these things when I was younger. A lot of the foods that we're surrounded by are just like meal deals and that sort of thing. Like what does, if you live in the UK, what do most people have at lunchtime? A meal deal. They go and have a sandwich with loads of mayonnaise in. And you don't really think about it. And then when you actually start looking at the ingredients, you're like, wow. Why is there so much sugar in this? Why is there so much crap? What are all these ingredients? I mean, if you look at the back of the Huel ingredients list, you're like, there's loads of ingredients. You're like, well, what is all this? But I, like I said, I think it is a good stopgap. But then when you look at like the amount of sugar and all that, very low in the Huel, you know, after some of the carbs from the, the oats get sort of digested into sugars, but so there's a little bit, but you know, it's not like, seriously, look at your meal deal, for God's sake. Look at the ingredients. It's not that good. But especially like where I was having like, if I get like an Indian takeaway, I would used to love a chicken korma. Very sweet. Who knows how much sugar is potentially in that? Or I used to love eating Chinese food. I absolutely hate it now. But when I used to eat the Chinese food, it's very like greasy. Um, I used to love lemon chicken and I think there's a lot of sugar in that lemon sauce that I used to get and like everything sort of fried if you've got like those chicken balls the battered chicken balls your fingers get all greasy afterwards I absolutely hate it now while you're on the hill look at the foods that you are eating and like just objectively look at them don't try and feel emotional about it like just think logically like what is in this food and then just think about what's that doing to me? And how do I feel if I don't eat those foods? And that's what I think the beauty of having a meal replacement drink like Huel is. It, it takes that away so you're not having that crap. And you can experience what it's like to have the right level of vitamins and nutrition. But I do think it is really important to actually take that next step and learn about diet and then basically stop having the heel because I think I just think it's a very valuable learning tool and that's why I think it did change my life in that respect because now I see food in a completely different way sometimes I see it almost in a sort of bad way because you realize how much the food in the supermarket is not for you when you start actually looking at ingredients like let's say I wanted some chicken and I'm hungry there and then 
that this is the problem being hungry there and then in the shop i go to the food like the cooked meat section because you know, i'm hungry now and i think i want some protein let's get some pre-cooked chicken and you look at the package and you look at the ingredients you know like why is there dextrose in this uh, why is there all this other stuff like the best thing to do is to pick up the raw chicken and cook it at home but yeah the problem is when you're hungry there and then there's really not that much that's good you, know, you have to sort of research it beforehand and know so you can go into the shop knowing what's healthy and what you can grab and eat and that's another thing like what's healthy it's very individual in a way, it depends on your body. Like I would say cottage cheese is a good choice to go for, um, like health wise, but then it depends, can you digest the cheese? You know, how does your body deal with whey? Can you even have that? Some people probably not, but, and then some people might think this tastes disgusting or I hate the texture. And that's one thing Huel also helped with. It's learning to set that aside and separate that from the food experience and learning to just eat things that fuel your body. It's a different way of looking at food. It's not about eating for enjoyment. It's about eating for fuel. And I think you need a bit of both, but I think primarily like 80% of your meals need to be for fuel, like to actually feel good. And yes, you know, there are ways of making that fuel more enjoyable, but I think the mindset of eating for fuel is the best mindset, really. Um, unless, like, you derive most of your pleasure from food. But um, anyway, eating for fuel will probably make you feel better. And I think it's, that's the mindset that Huel helped me get in. Yeah, they call it human fuel. So <laughs> that's sort of its tagline. Um, so it's that sort of, yeah, that mindset going into it, thinking about food as fuel, I think will just like just that mindset will help you a lot of making your food decisions because you know if you're looking at like the chocolate bar is that really fuel like maybe if you're running a lot and you need glucose now but there are better options even for that um but yeah that you know i'm not going to say there isn't a time and a place for a chocolate bar because there probably is like i said like if you're doing loads of cardio and it's like oh my god i need glucose i need sugars now I don't, you know, it's the only way to get enough calories in for this ultra marathon I'm running, then have a Mars bar. But you know, I'm not running a marathon. <laughs> There's very rarely a time I need a Mars bar. But the thing is also on top of like increased food IQ, it's the taste change that happens. Like I said, when I first had Huel, I almost wanted to be sick. And then over time, my body became accustomed to blandness and I, I think I learned to appreciate blandness in a way and now I eat I guess quite a bland diet like if I go and cook up like I might have some Americans call it ground beef we call it minced minced beef or whatever so I'll be having some minced meat five percent lean beef fried it up and I'll just cut half an avocado with it put a tiny bit of salt on it and I'll eat that and I think it tastes great. And then I might have the same minced beef or ground beef or whatever you want to call it in some sort of like pre-prepared meal. And it's got all these extra things like sugars and that, and it's actually too much. And that's why I said I got accustomed to blandness in a way. And I think allowing yourself to, like I said earlier, remove the enjoyment <laughs> aspect of it. It sounds, like I'm trying to say it in a bad way, but what I'm trying to say is like remove the aspect of like the emotional aspect from it. Like, um, and then as your taste changes and you get more accustomed to the blandness, you don't seek sweet endeavors anymore. Like a donut doesn't do it for you anymore. In fact, it's like it tastes bad because it tastes so, so sweet and so sort of fake. You're like, I want some real food now. But I just wanted to share that because I think that's where Huel has been very valuable for me. It's been learning about nutrition, so increasing your food IQ. I like that way of saying it. Um, teaching you what foods that you are eating aren't actually fueling your body and using that knowledge to 
come up with better meals for yourself going forwards. And then I think ultimately allowing you to function better as a person because you're actually getting the right sort of nutrition that your body needs. And it's like a constant evolution type thing. Like keep, keep researching, keep trying new things, Keep, you know, if you want to spice things up, you know, make it fun and enjoyable for yourself. I'm not saying remove all of that. That's just how it worked for me. I'm very like, I'm like I want to eat clean. Like, <laughs> that's just me. But, you know, try whatever works for you. But that's why I think Huel can be very valuable for you as a stepping stone. So I do think it's still worth trying to this day. I think it's, it has been a great product for me. And I think if I never had Huel, would I be in a different position now? Probably, I probably wouldn't have the same sort of knowledge or the same sort of excitement about diet and learning about those sort of things because I do remember when I first started having Huel and the fact that it's like, it was exactly 400 calories for like one shake, it made it very easy to track and I'd never tracked my calories before. So I started tracking my calories and I started like, you put it into like my fitness pal, or there's another one called Chronometer, which is great. And it shows you, Chronometer shows you a breakdown of all the vitamins you've had and the fats and like what's missing from your diet. I highly rate Chronometer. So search that one if, you're, if you've never heard of it before, get on Chronometer. But then um, that shows you, it's like, wow, these things are missing from my diet. This is what my diet actually looks like. So I think having you here, tracking what you eat is a great thing to start doing and that's sort of step one once you've been tracking and having heal for a while like i said it's time to move on you move on and have some real food because i do think eating real food it is better but yeah i like i said i still have ready to drink heal every now and then and then um, it's not that i'm you know i know there's like artificial sweetness in it and all that but I think there's still a time and a place for it. Like if I had to choose between a pre-made heel and a meal deal sandwich, I choose a pre-made heel. Um, I just feel like it's the better choice for me. Um, so yeah, I hope what I said helps some of you. I hope that maybe some of you might consider it because I do think it's a good idea. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just, these are my experiences. I don't actually drink the powder anymore. I don't, it is a better deal if you actually want to get into Hill. It's a much better deal like price-wise to get the powder and make it home and take it to wherever you need. But if there's a shop near you that sells pre-made Hill, why not try it out? It is twice the price per shake. So for 400 calories, I think for here, it was like £1.50 for a, a shake at home if you shake it up and take it. And the pre-made Hill can range between three to £3.50, depending if there's a deal on. It's a bit pricey, but at the end of the day, it's the same price as a meal deal in the shops here. So you're really just weighing one thing up with the other. You're going to spend that amount anyway on lunch, probably, unless you're actually making meals and taking them, which I doubt that you are. Some people are, but I doubt that you are. <laughs> I don't even do that. And I, I know I should, but that's a whole different thing. But anyway, if you like this video, please press subscribe and I'll, I'd love to see you in the next video that I make. So thank you and I hope you stick around. See you in the next one.